uh, some things to go uh, before we go forward. I think you all know this. Uh, keep yourself on mute until after after uh, we speak. Uh, we've had some instances in the past where a dog or even a couple of chickens have, have made some noise in the background. And believe it or not, that really interrupted <laughs> the, the flow of things. I would welcome uh, chickens. That sounds uh, yeah, chickens cool. are fun. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, feel free to uh, send share any questions, observations, links, resources, what you have in, uh, on the on the, uh, the chat box. Everything will be recorded, as is this video, which we will have ready by the end of the day. Um, and 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 that's all I, I really have to say. I think we'll, we'll go right to it. Uh, Jay Harris is, has quite a few um, years in this, in working in the field of international education, 30 years. He's experienced. I could say he, he, uh, he has seen it all. Um, he recently founded the, uh, is the Carpet Global, which I will let him talk about. This is an opportunity for you all to, uh, to, uh, to talk with him and just learn a little bit about what he brings to the table, what his vision is. And more importantly, uh, we'll ask him a tough question. Uh, what does he think it, is going to happen to international education once we get through the pandemic. And certainly we, we welcome everyone's opinions on this. Okay, uh, Jake, I hand it over to you. Thanks, Tom. I, I really appreciate it. I uh, appreciate uh, everyone who's here investing time in this. I appreciate the interest. Um, I, I thank Tom and Abradia for hosting this. It's uh, very cool. I've, I've signed up for uh, some things uh, coming up, um, but I, um, I welcome this opportunity to share uh, what's near and dear to me currently, uh, and that is Carpe Global. Um, this for me is sort of an amalgamation uh, and a follow-on to my career uh, such that it's been thus far. Um, so what I'd like to accomplish today is uh, a bit of a, an introductory overview. Uh, we'll, we'll delve in with some screen sharing to Carpe Global, uh, various elements uh, and aspects of that. I'll uh, try my best to leave plenty of time for questions <clears throat> and, and hope for, uh, for follow-up with some of you. So uh, now I, I need to return to my, uh, my full screen here to see uh, who else we've got on board. Is Sarah Pirtle with us yet? No, not yet, Jay. I'll, not I'll yet. You know when she. She's a yeah. an acquaintance from my my long lost past, uh, my early career. So it was kind of fun to see her signed up for this. I hope she. Uh, please alert me if she signs on, so I can say a special hello. <laughs> uh, in any case, um, let me begin uh, reading, for goodness' sake, uh, a couple of sentences uh, from a blog uh, posted on Carpe Global. It was something I wrote, and it nicely overviews my thought process in a nutshell. What I said in that post, uh, which is titled Sparks of Awareness, Windows of Opportunity, I said, over the years I've enjoyed sharing international resources and opportunities with hundreds of individuals, groups, organizations, and institutions. The reactions are usually predictable and enjoyable. <clears throat> the info recipient, usually looks frustrated or confused at first, then says something like, I have never talked about this before. Thus, the Carpe Global concept was born to address information gaps and to empower global citizens. It's, it's that simple. Uh, what we're doing is not rocket science, but I like to think that it is somewhat profound in that when those, those curtains covering the windows of opportunity are parted, and we want to be part of accomplishing that, it can be a difference-making process, a change-making process. Uh, it's like the old saying, knowledge is power. In this case, information is the power to consider, uh, apply, uh, pursue, engage, connect, and perhaps share onward. <clears throat> but I, I have indeed observed this common phenomenon over decades, and I've got the silver hair to prove <laughs> those decades behind me now, uh, phenomenon being that frustration and confusion up front. Why didn't anyone ever tell me? Um, so uh, I'll get back into that a bit later, um, but first to, to understand me 
a bit more is to better understand Carpe Global. So if you'll indulge me, uh, I'll provide a, a very brief overview of, of an eclectic background. Uh, proudly eclectic, professional generalist. I, I don't proclaim myself to be an expert of anything, uh, nor do I, I think I want to be. Uh, I've done study abroad work in various ways, the traditional stuff and programs like taking uh, young people to Jordan to study Arabic. And, uh, and from that, I, I developed a whole Middle East portfolio, which wasn't really expected by anyone on that campus other than me, uh, frankly, because I saw it as a springboard. But that's what we do, right, in international education. <clears throat> I have uh, worked with international students and scholars and, and have loved that part of my work. I've been a, a Fulbright advisor for Americans, both grad students and faculty, but I've worked with visiting scholars and have, have arranged their visits. Um, I once won a national award in my early career for combining international students with study abroad students and getting them out into communities across a, a very rural state um, and introducing people to other countries and cultures. I've done development assistance work. I have a little display item here, one of my favorite uh, gifts from a group of participants. It's a football autographed by a group of uh, uh, martial arts specialists from Tajikistan who were here on a youth sports program that I coordinated. <laughs> and they, for some reason, they thought an American football uh, would be the, the perfect autographed gift, uh, but it's, it's a treasure. <clears throat> I've done lots of community outreach, uh, working with uh, networks that, that, that you all are aware of, the uh, RPCBs, uh, sister cities, world affairs councils, uh, you know, such people, such members, such organizations. Um, I've done K-12 outreach and have, uh, have been a national leader uh, along those lines uh, in years past. Um, I stepped into that um, unexpectedly early in my career and uh, learned quickly and, um, and really loved it. My, one of my favorite places to be on any given day still is in front of a group of middle school students uh, and working them through global perspectives and, and um, such things. So uh, another show and tell related to K-12 is curriculum uh, planning. Um, and I, I was the, uh, or a primary co-author. Can you see this okay, Tom? Uh, uh, if you could lift it up a little bit, that'd be great. And maybe um, <laughs> if there's a link or something, you can type. Uh, yeah, I'll try and, well, I'll it's, try and type that in the. Um, it's dated. The uh, planning curriculum in international education, very dated at this point, but still very relevant. Uh, this was a uh, in tandem with the State Department of Public Instruction, and uh, helped us win a national award. Uh, in fact, so K twelve bottom line is a uh, is is a world where I I feel very uh, comfortable and have done a lot of work. Uh, and finally, campus internationalization in general. Um, but I'd like to think in a lot of creative ways. Um, I, I, I'm an idea guy, you know, everyone likes to say that. I don't claim that all of mine are good, however, but I sure like to kick them around. And I've done kind of wild and crazy things on campuses, like uh, out of the blue, it occurred to me to approach a student government uh, uh, on, on campus, the, the leaders, and work with them as they, they willingly did to create a um, position statement of sorts on the, uh, the value of global perspectives and in international education. Um, that was cool. It was, you know, peers promoting it to peers in that case. Uh, I helped develop an ISEC uh, chapter on campus where it was not known before, ISEC being a, a worldwide sort of youth leadership organization with a lot of global uh, connotations. I've done the NAFSA circuit. I've, I've been a plenary chair at National a couple of times uh, years ago. I haven't been very active there uh, of late uh, because of this eclecticness, if that's a word, because of these different directions. Uh, but I enjoyed all of that. Um, so bottom line, uh, not trying to, to toot my horn because I, I, uh, <laughs> I was specific about 
my, my, my modest professional generalism up front, but that's a, a space I enjoy. I, I just really like exploring and, and delving in and um, getting in, involved in different loops. So it, it does make me eclectic and it does put my finger on lots of different pulses. That's the point. And that helps explain, I suppose, why I am creating Carpe Global because it is, uh, well, it's, it's nothing if not eclectic. It's uh, sort of comprehensively appointed with all sorts of interesting information about all sorts of topics and types of things. Uh, by types, I mean scholarships and curriculum guides and articles and podcasts. Um, it, this is just something that comes naturally to me. And the, the content in part, people always wanna know, how do you find it, where does it come from? How do you select it? Um, and, and when did this begin? My somewhat serious answer to that question is, as soon as my career did, because I was, I was tucking things away. You know, I'm, I'm an information pack rat. And so I was, I was tucking away resources and opportunities and sharing those um, in productive ways, I, I, I hope, um, with this person, you know, this faculty member, this student, uh, this community organization. And in doing so, uh, observing what I mentioned earlier, this, uh, this reaction, you know, why didn't anyone ever share this uh, with me before? But thank you, you know, cartwheels of happiness now that they know. And so uh, at one point, I just decided to, uh, to consider that in a, uh, a way that would bring, would bring it to the table for a lot of people uh, at scope and, and scale. Um, a difference-making capacity in a much bigger way. Um, that really trips my trigger. It, it uh, gets me out of bed excited about the day and, and making that, that information uh, literate difference for people with whom we, we share this, this stuff. Um, now, there are some challenges that I'll, I'll mention very quickly and I'll get you into the website soon for a little tour uh, and you may have seen it already. But uh, one of the challenges that I'm, I'm fully aware of is that there's this common human tendency, uh, and I'm guilty as well, to, to not know what we don't know, right? Um, which gets to information uh, as well. Um, so regardless of a person's uh, job and background and what they think they know, uh, we often don't know a lot of things yet those things exist. There's this, this paradox, and Carpe Global is addressing a paradox of things that exist, yet things that remain unknown, often to some of those most globally engaged. Uh, this is what I have found. Hey, uh, uh, Jay, I'm just gonna hop in there really quickly because I think uh, one of our participants, we have to, we'll have to leave in a few minutes. So I guess I'll put this question to you. What is one thing that you, before she leaves, what is one thing you'd like everyone here to get out of Carpet Global? Uh, the fact that it is a strong value added resource. Uh, the fact that it addresses the paradox that I just mentioned. Um, it, it takes a, a, a bit of a combination of uh, uh, vision and creativity and openness, I think, to embrace something like this. Um, it, it takes knowing that that in fact there is a lot out there that uh, faculty, students, NGO staff simply may not learn about otherwise uh, unless we find a way to share it with them. Um, I'll screen share now. I uh, just wanted to, to share some testimonials. Tom, did you want to say anything else along those lines? Or Okay. Um, take a look at the second one here. This is, this is on our website. And, and Jordan uh, was a global studies major. I find this is common across the board. You know, imagine the global studies alum interested in foreign affairs and foreign policy, yet no one on campus, no professor, no academic program 
No international education office ever informed them, for goodness sake, about the young professionals in foreign policy, which they can join for $20 as a student and get the newsletter and begin networking and engaging and considering careers along these lines. It's, it's forehead slappingly um, uh, unfortunate. Uh, yet I've heard it time and again. This is one of my, my grab bag favorite examples because we've had some amazingly global young people on board with us as interns, yet they have not been informed about things like that. And so in answer to Tom's previous question, what, what do I want you all to know about this? It's, it's this in part that please consider this as you know the tippy tip tip of a very large information iceberg. If you can imagine, if you didn't know about this, for example, or if you can imagine students uh, on campus, if that's where you work, not knowing about it, then imagine this and multiply this info byte and this change-making potential item times hundreds and perhaps thousands. Um, so, back to or, or on to the, uh, the home page. And I'll just do a quick tour through this uh, so that you uh, can perhaps understand it more fully and understand our thinking. And, uh, and by the way, we, uh, there will always be a, a quote of a global or intercultural nature uh, popping up on this slide every day, a different one, with the same image, because I believe strongly in that earth from space sort of educational perspective. I've used that with middle schoolers, and it's, it's powerful. It's a good place to begin. Uh, but, you know, quotes, people like us just like these types of quotes, and then you can use it in a proposal, a newsletter, uh, uh, you know, students can use them in, in papers and so on. So, uh, and this, I'll read it in case you're having trouble seeing it. Uh, Smile when knowing that 5% of your Carpe Global subscription fee supports Clowns Without Borders USA. We're proud to help them bring resilience through laughter to refugee camps and zones of conflict and natural disaster. So we are proud of this relationship. We want to help make a difference for them. And we want to do a lot more of this kind of thing, frankly. Uh, there's a lot uh, in my head and a lot uh, on file that you, you can't see now but we want to be a, a sort of a social good uh, business. Uh, we want to operate like that. We want to become designated at some point uh, as a B corporation, which in the world of business means that you're, you're very deliberately exhibiting a, a sort of a social good philosophy and approach. Uh, this is meaningful for, for us. Um, so down here, you start to, to get a hint uh, about some of the types of things we feature. And I'll say right off the bat that we already have redesigned thoughts in mind, uh, including uh, making these links. They currently do not link to collections of these things. They're just here as, as an example to help you imagine what we're all about. A lot of things uh, we're going to do. We're going to make the search bar here much more visible and obvious because this is sort of the magic gateway. These buttons here are what I call rationale pieces for global citizens, educators, and students to help, help you understand uh, uh, why this is a good thing for you. Uh, let me run the word, the easy word global in the search bar, the, the, the magic portal. And um, if you've subscribed now to Carpe Global, I say that because up until now, the last couple of months, we opened up for free as sort of a pandemic period uh, community service, like a lot of other people were doing. Um, and I'm happy we did that imperfectly, somewhat nervously on my part. I've written a lot of grant proposals. And as you all know, you've got to be word perfect if you have any hope of winning a grant. This is not that. <laughs> this is entrepreneurial, entrepreneurially imperfect. And we're just going to have at it as best we can. But using the word global, this is what pops. And you can you know, modify your search um, uh, here on the right by searching for various types of things, uh, from awards to games to articles and books or uh, topics. 
uh, you can start to expand your, your search capacity. And say you're a student and you don't know maybe the right search words or themes to consider, uh, or you, don't, you haven't, haven't really thought about what might excite you or address your passion, but here we're helping you uh, do that. And we've got icons you see in the upper right that help you navigate your search results uh, and then cruise through them for the greatest efficiency and relevance possible. You can save items to favorites using the little heart in the upper right corner. We briefly describe the item um, for you. We indicate countries and regions of relevance, topics and themes of relevance tell you what type of thing it is. It's, maybe it's an association, maybe it's a, a podcast. And you know, using the word, the easy word global, you see our search results right now go on 55 pages. And this for us is just the beginning. You know, we're young, we're, we're early. So we do want to be uh, as comprehensive as possible. And it's, it's eclectic. It, it is, you'll, you'll, you'll learn about, um, uh, an article written by a scholar. Uh, you'll learn about a fellowship uh, using that word global. You'll learn about so many different kinds of things. And this is part of the, the power of it. Um, I know the international education world. I know the university world. And to some extent, I know the NGO world and some of these others that I mentioned previously. Um, it's, it's a busy place. Uh, we all were doing more with less, and for goodness sake, aren't we, isn't that the case now with the budget cuts, the program cuts, the staff cuts? So again, in answer to Tom's question, this is, a, this is addressing one of the trends underway now, in addition to everything going online. And that trend being, and I've heard it said, I've heard it voiced, uh, that we still, campuses, for example, still need to find creative ways to maintain value, right? Despite all of these cuts and challenges. We, despite the, the, the tragic circumstances of late, I think we really offer a great solution um, because this is all about a value added approach, a, a different way to think about internationalizing person by person. Um, you know, academic department by academic department uh, within an NGO where learning about these things can help network and, and collaborate. We've got a wonderful overview video that I won't run with a voiceover done by a young professional who's helping us. Uh, we, we offer a blog. Uh, we're early in that. We're very early in our newsletter. These things are still under development. Testimonials swap out here. We've got the call to action bar down here in worldly content. We just offer up a little sampler platter of some of the things that we uh, we feature here. Uh, over here, we on the right, upper right, we want you to tell us about things that we should feature if they're not here already. Clicking into the topics page, we demonstrate how very comprehensive and eclectic this is. Uh, these things populate only because there is content in these categories. And as you can see, it goes on and on and on. And if you are a global person, a global citizen to any degree, you're going to find something here that, that is of, of use and of interest. Now that's not to say we have cajoodles and dozens of content items in any given category here. In some cases we do, uh, and in other cases we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> and we've started. Uh, here in Global co Collections, we offer up uh, collections of certain types of content. So you can go into films and, and language uh, resources and, and learn more about those. It's just a kind of a helpful little a collecting point. We have what I think is one of the most comprehensive uh, calendars uh, that I have ever seen. Uh, and this was done with help from a couple of very bright young interns uh, with guidance for me. And now on any given day, uh, it, sometimes it just goes on and on in terms of uh, webinars happening, conferences, 
commemorative worldwide events, holidays, things like that. It's, it's very richly appointed with info. And our underlying goal with this is to educate, of course, because not only are you learning about the conference of any given organization, but maybe now you've learned about that organization and you can delve in for membership or resources that they offer. So we, this serves a lot of sort of underlying <laughs> top secret, not so secret purposes, one of which is broadening education Another of which is, is helping people become more creative in what they do through these eclectic resources. The, the globe may not stay with us forever, but I wanted to, to play with it. It's identifying me here in Saluda, which isn't quite accurate, but almost. <laughs> and if you were to click in to the little link lower left, you can even see it here. Uh, since early June, we've had, looks like about uh, a little more than 2,300 unique site visitors, and I think that's now from 60 different countries. Uh, that equates, if I did the math right recently, that's something like 35, 40 people a day, and that is without any deliberate networking or marketing yet on our part, because we are early, we're still ironing out wrinkles, and have yet to, uh, to do the, the marketing and advertising. So in other words, not bad, not too shabby in terms of unique site visitors. We want to feature job feeds on the lower right. We want to have a little awards program. That's the lower left. Uh, I'm whirlwinding here, so bear with me. Go into our uh, about page. I really like this image. I hope you do. I kind of fell in love with it when I saw it. And um, we, uh, we start by explaining our name. We're not carp diem, we're carpe diem, you know, playing on the old Latin. Uh, I'm sure all of you understand that. We make our mission and vision very clear. We're all about empowering people with global interests. We do refer to the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, because we, we believe in those and we want to be part of helping people uh, take action on them. We address some of our core values here, global perspectives, change makers, uh, reducing racism and such. Uh, and I want to address a couple of our FAQs here because they're undoubtedly uh, questions that some of you uh, may have. They're, they're commonly asked. Uh, I, I did enough research up front to, to know this. And one of those questions, people just love to ask, well, why, why Carpe Global? Why can't we just use a search engine and, and seek these things out? Well, as we say, hopefully without seeming too terribly sarcastic, have at it and then try Carpe Global. Uh, we do want to have a little sense of humor uh, here. And, um, you know, by, by that, we, we do indeed mean have at it. Now, if you're a young student or a young professional, uh, you may not know the right search words that lead you to your gold nugget uh, resource or opportunity. You know, might not know where to begin in Google, so you're kind of stumbling around. If you do have some knowledge, some experience, some targets, you might be up till 1 a.m. And, and on page 49 of your search result, results in Google before you find that perfect thing. What we're trying to say here is don't bother with that. Here we are, you know, this is what we do. We aggregate, we, uh, we accumulate, um, and we do it in a sort of a studied, uh, intuitive way, which gets to this question, how do we select things? And we get into those details you know, for, for those who are going to want to know, and we, we have certain criteria of avoidance, we have, uh, a protocol parameters that we use in, in seeking out, in analyzing, and even in, in loading content so the search functionality uh, is, is productive. So we, we go about it, uh, I guess, with sort of a, a grounding uh, in background and a certain intuition, which is why when I seek out interns, oh, and please send some to me, by the way, we're always open to more, but they must be, and this is how I seek, why I seek them out, as young global hotshots. Uh, my term, but they exist, and you know them. And they're out there, 
and uh, and we've got them on on the team. Um, some of these on the executive team are young professionals, uh, most of whom are doing other things in addition to this. Uh, a couple of these are students. Uh, Anastasia here on the left is from Belarus, so. Uh, uh, obviously, she's very distracted and disturbed right now uh, because of what's happening in her home country. Uh, it's a very, very diverse crew. I'm proud of that. Uh, Lucas uh, is the young guy from, uh, from Brazil, uh, born and raised in a favela. Uh, these are our interns. Uh, Ariel is from uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast. Uh, Daisy is a first generation uh, Mexican American. Uh, first generation college, I should say. Francesca is in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah, I mentioned that. Uh, no, Ariel was, uh, sorry, the Caribbean, and, and Francesca is Cote d'Ivoire. So, fun crew. We have a little internship blurb here. I'm very proud of our advisory group. Um, they have, uh, you know, sort of, sort of pledged their interest and support. Uh, we don't expect them to to uh, dedicate loads of time uh, on our behalf, but they, they have and, and will continue to provide good feedback. And they, like Carpe Global, are an eclectic crew. Uh, Rachel Vincent, uh, bottom center, was a grad school buddy of mine. She now co-directs the Nobel Women's Initiative in Canada, an amazing NGO working with uh, envelope-pushing women worldwide. I, encourage you to check it out. Uh, I, I want to point out to people like Nancy, uh, lower left here. Uh, she's with Adobe. Uh, Yeruj, uh, lower right, uh, handled uh, a, a large chunk of the Asian Development Bank's work in Southeast Asia. And to have people like this see Carpe Global and, and converse with me about it and, and voice enthusiasm uh, about it and, and tell me that they get it. That's, uh, you can probably see it in my smile and hear it in my voice. That's empowering, it's reinforcing, which, you know, an entrepreneur needs. <laughs> uh, but it, it says to me that we're on to something here because all of these people you're seeing here believe in this and think it, it brings value. Uh, the young professionals in foreign policy told me the same thing. The former president there uh, says that she thinks it can bring value to her members. Uh, we're still building our young professional advisors, but we're, we're on the way there. Uh, I want to point this out. Uh, we offer some pandemic resources, which a lot of people are doing, but uh, let me just click on added recently here. This is where we demonstrate that we do indeed keep this fresh and new with, um, with recently added content. What you're seeing here on this page, these were added only yesterday. And it's not just because I'm speaking to you today. This is the, the way we roll. And we, we average anywhere from 25 to 50 or 60 on a weekly basis, new, new items. I think that's, that's a pretty good pace. Uh, and you can see, again, how, how sort of fascinating and eclectic this combination is just right here, um, a scholars program, uh, an NGO, fellowships, uh, more fellowships, and you know the list goes on. Uh, finally, here, upper right, you see the My Account section. So once a person uh, has subscribed, uh, they can uh, go into uh, their their profile. You can create a profile. You can opt in to uh, to network and communicate with others through messages. Uh, we will build forums here where you can chat with others about whatever, global issues, content, uh, and so on. So think of it as sort of a miniature LinkedIn in, in, in some senses. We do want to build community. I neglected to click on, it says upgrade, but that's because I'm in my account. It, it would normally say join if you're a unique member. This is where you learn about our, uh, our, our business approach, our subscription approach. Uh, I had some learning curves along these lines coming from the university world. You know, at, on campuses, 
don't mean to offend anyone. I've been there and we always talked about the real world externally. <laughs> I don't believe that's true. It's a real world on campus, but you know what I mean. And the business uh, uh, approach was a learning curve for me in some ways. And so we had to settle on pricing and how to go about all this. Um, these are individual subscription uh, options on the left. The Voyager on the right is where we want to convince and persuade campuses or NGOs and associations to join. So we, we run through some narrative here about that and campuses, for example, will click here. They'll get, get a little bit of my, my theorizing on, on why this is of value, right? Uh, I addressed the, the tip of the iceberg concept earlier. And down here, we show you uh, a mock-up, uh, an example of what your own personal portal, your own institutional portal will look like. And if an institution or an NGO subscribes, they can select their price range uh, based on, this, this was the big gulp, the business decision, and the, the, the part of it I, I, I least like to address with uh, a crowd like you, but yeah, here it is. And, and we've gone about it um, in a way that uh, a lot of people do. Um, uh, we are encouraging cost sharing uh, among offices on campus and it's, it's done uh, already. It's not a, an uncommon model where the, the library, for example, certainly in our case, career services office, the career services center might pitch in to pay for part of it, the International Education Office, study abroad, uh, maybe an academic department, international relations on a big campus, uh, you know, split the difference, it's reasonable. And for that, here's, here's the, the cool bottom line, everyone on campus now has access to Carpe Global. And there is power in that. That is the change making difference. That's the, the new thing. It's, it's the, the rocket science that really isn't. It's, it's just the, the unprofound, yet somewhat profound nature of providing ownership of information to the masses and letting them have at it, you know, not, not forcing the Office of International Education to constantly pump information like this out and encourage people to pursue. It's you inform them about their access to Carpe Global and then watch what happens. And it will make a difference. I, I guarantee it because it gets to every day and every year of my background in sharing such things and seeing these aha moments one at a time. It just happens. Hey, so it's yeah, a, you I'm, gotta I'm, have faith in the process. And with that, I'll open up to questions. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Kathy sent me a question via the chat. She says, when you're speaking about how on campus you always talk about the real world, so she says, you know, versus the ivory tower. Can you address that? What do you think? Uh, I, I was being a little facetious and probably shouldn't have earlier. I, it was helping me make a point in probably not a great way. Uh, ivory tower, I, I don't know. Um, it, it's up to, to one's own sort of personal view. I've, my career has largely been on campuses and it, it, there was a lot of real world stuff going on. Uh, I was just trying to, to make the point that the, the entrepreneurial and business uh, elements of this, some of this were a bit new to me. I've done lots of grant work, complex major grants, but you know, this is a little different. That's, that's the only point I was trying to make. I, I don't know if that answers the question, but. <laughs> I, I'd love to know what, what you all think about this? What, what's your, your gut reaction? Uh, having heard me say that there are wrinkles, you know, there are improvements we can make, we're aware of that, but I do remain open to suggestions, please. Uh, you'll know where to find me. Uh, Tom, is my, my email sure. available to them? Uh, I have the, uh, no, we can put it up right now, uh, if you want. I had the, uh, the Twitter, I'll, I'll put that up here. Carpe. Yeah, please just uh, just contact me via email. Uh, you can just use J J A Y my name at carpeglobal.com. Um, uh, but I want your suggestions. I want to know about other things we should feature that aren't 
aren't yet in our library or content collection. Um, I, I'd love for you to follow us, uh, you know, at Carpe Global. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and otherwise my LinkedIn account, my personal account, which sort of double serves for this. And I'd love to, to get a, a, a connection request from any of you. Sure. Uh, sure. I think I'm, I'm connected to some of you now. I saw the list of participants today, yeah. but I'd like to connect with, with anyone who would like. Well, I, I think uh, rather than just using the chat, let's just open the table to, to, to anyone who wants uh, to make an observation or has a question. Does anyone have a question for Jay? I'll make a, a comment. Um, I don't like to comment unless you can see me, so you can see my facial expressions. <laughs> see you, Kathy. Thank you. Without a mask, uh, you lose so much when you don't have a mask on, too, and never mind when you're blanked out. Um, no, I think it, just to come back to your comments, you're right on target with the with. I always say to people, uh, Earth to Ivory Tower. You know, uh, this is not how the real world lives. You know, <laughs> um, but. Um, I think I, I haven't, I spent a little bit of time looking at this site um, before today and um, one of my suggestions, and it could very well be in there, excuse me, the dog is over here now. Uh, one of the um, things is that I think moving forward, the reality is that we're gonna have a period of time that we are probably going to be virtual. Mm -hmm. And how do we sustain the, uh, impact of international uh, internationalizations, international connections, whatever, um, until we can get to the other side of um, being able to send students out again. So I think putting in, and it could be there and I might not have seen it uh, yet, um, the, the virtual opportunities for um, for students, for professional development, for um, access. Um, Absolutely. It's going to be really yeah. crucial. Um, so, we, and, uh, we absolutely do want to feature such things, if, if not partner uh, with, with people and, and help create such things. We'll do that to whatever extent we can. We, uh, right now, the, the modus operandi is, is mostly to feature nonprofit types of of entities and resources and opportunities, but to remain very creatively open to partnerships and uh, sort of mutually supportive collaboration. And that can get to something as simple as just reciprocal advertising. You know, I make sure. you known and you make me known and it doesn't cost us anything. True. Uh, but I believe in what you're saying and those types of, of opportunities are spinning up quickly and we would love to, to help support that process. Uh, Please continue with questions, but while that happens, I'm just going to click through some tabs that I have open and ready to, to further uh, illustrate some of the classic examples of things that various types of global citizens, uh, various levels in various places tend to not know about, uh, one of which is, is this one, uh, sponsored by our retired diplomats. In this case, due to my K-12 background, I can tell you that 9.9 .9 out of 10 uh, students and teachers don't know about this, yet it does exist. Here it is, and students do participate. But imagine if I can tweak those numbers. Let's say one out of a thousand kids know, knows about this now. What if I can make it a hundred out of a thousand? I mean, that excites me the difference making potential in that, you know, sparking young uh, future diplomats and, and global studies majors on, at campuses and so on. But they've got to be smart. They got to know about it at first. So this for teachers is an example. Uh, and it's good. It could also serve as a teaching tool, by the way. Uh, this relates to K-12. Uh, who knows that NCSS has such a statement and, and how can we use that uh, at, at school, how can we incorporate that in, in what we do? Uh, here's a good example. Uh, the young women uh, on my crew have not known about this until now, and they, and they love it. And I think students can join as students, women in international security. And this one for campuses. 
I'm guessing some of the folks uh, here today know about this one, but if not, I'm, I'm helping sort of prove my premise. And uh, I, I would want faculty to know about these. You know, they can decide whether or not it's, it's useful uh, to them, but uh, they should at least know about it. And again, consider all these things, the, the tippy tip of a very big iceberg, and, and just imagine all of this if you didn't know about some of them. So imagine that phenomenon expanded, multiplied times hundreds, and the, the power of information that follows that. Sorry, I, I should shut up and no, Jay. I just wanted to add. I, until today, I didn't. I wasn't even aware of Professors Without Borders. You would. Yeah, I never heard of it either. You would Thank think you very much. And like I, I like to say be. during chats like this with students, I say uh, Merry Christmas and uh, Happy Birthday, because <laughs> now you know. <laughs> is, is, Jay, is this a new group? I, like I said, I've never heard of this before. No, not new. Wow, that's amazing, man. This is what we can do. We hope to do for you. <laughs> no, that that's fantastic. I think. Hit me with right. some more questions, please. Uh, how do you normally get the word out about um, Carpet uh, Global? Uh, the answer gets to what we will be doing because okay. we, we really haven't engaged in, in much uh, deliberate marketing and advertising yet. It gets a little bit to my eclectic background. Uh, because of that, I am in lots of loops and I know a lot of people, places, buttons to push, et cetera. So the marketing of this, uh, unlike a lot of entrepreneurial endeavors, I, I don't lose sleep uh, over the marketing, but it'll have to be a gradual process. Um, we uh, will simply approach uh, stakeholders and on, on campuses, those would be people like some of you uh, today. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll make a pitch, uh, we'll, we'll direct people to social media, our social media. There'll be all sorts of ways of going about it. Um, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll be approaching uh, lots of different types of players uh, worldwide. And, and by the way, I should add that we hope to have a partner or a teammate in each of several countries who will help us accomplish that. And, uh, might surprise you, but uh, we, we have heard interest in that voiced now from people in about a dozen countries. And, and we haven't really pursued that part of our strategy much yet. So got a lot of things spinning up. Um, we're not there yet, but you know, we're young and, and we'll get there. Yeah, it's pretty tricky now because we're, we're um, probably in a bit of a, well, we're in a hand-wringing dilemma on many levels, but it's certainly when people talk about international education, they're like, oh, don't, you know, forget, forget it, forget it. You know, we're, we're just trying to get from day to day. And, uh, you know, my overall concern is that, you know, obviously we all know we brought everybody back in the spring and we sent nobody in the fall and, and we're sending nobody for the entire academic year right now. Um, and um, it's just a really difficult and very challenging very challenging time. Um, it is indeed, and I, I uh, had no way of knowing that was coming, of course, yeah. but um, uh, I think, you know, there have to be silver linings. If there aren't, we'll all go insane, um, and I, I'd like to think that despite the circumstances and the tragedy, that we, what we're doing aligns with a lot of these trends, the, the kind of uh, the, and there was academic writing on this one, uh, even before the pandemic, this, this need to, uh, to bring more global at home, as people are saying. Um, for me, uh, the global perspectives guy from decades past, that's kind of old news, but it is becoming a trendy topic in academic writing and discussions of internationalization. Um, uh, we're in line with the online trend, we're in line with the, uh, the cutting of budgets and staffs and programs because we, we bring something that, that brings, that lends value. Uh, if only a place decides it can and wants to afford it and, and hopefully finds cost sharing ways to do that. I, I see now finally that we're only a, a group of uh, what, uh, two observers and me and Tom. I don't know how many we're on, we're on initially because I was preoccupied with, with what I was doing, but boy, I sure hope that uh, 
something about the spiel or this didn't uh, you know dissuade anyone uh, there will there will be this ongoing challenge it's we're for profit uh, we want that just to be a sustainability thing for us I want to start you know, paying stipends to interns, for goodness sake. We, we offer them a lot of perks and promises, and we, we, we keep those promises, but no one's getting paid yet. Um, so, you know, we have good intentions, but we're a, it's a, a business, um, and it will cost something. Um, so, you know, so I've heard it said, asked slash said by some uh, that, uh, so some folks are a little uh, averse to something like this that shares uh, stuff that's just already out there, you know, making you pay for public content, so to speak. And again, you know, my response to that is, well, have at it, and, and good luck on Google finding all of this. Uh, am I right? Do you agree? Or, or I'd like to hear your input, Kathy. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. I'll have students come in and they'll they'll send a note and say, can I, um, oh, I found this great site and they'll come in and they'll pull this up and it's like, you know, I'll listen and I don't want to, I don't want to burst their bubble or blow their enthusiasm and stuff. But I want to say this is like, you know, the, the Toys R Us of, of an international program. Um, and uh, I say, you have to do your homework. You know, you have to do your homework on, on all of those kinds of things and you get what you pay for. And, um, you know, there are just things that you need to look at. I, I mean, we all know, uh, we probably all of us know that there are some third party providers even that are recognized out there that were like, uh, whoa, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's scale back here and stuff. And, yeah. and in uh, institution um, like we're uh, like Nazareth College, we put limits on um, students' ability to utilize programs unless they're sponsored and approved by us. And, you know, I've brought in several programs that I've spent hours and hours in vetting and, you know, making agreements with. Um, and, but you really do need um, something like this uh, with the expertise, the professionalism, um, you know, to really help not only the students, but also to help the academic institution and the professionals. And well, thank you. Uh, I'm glad you get it. And uh, I'd, I'd love to, to work with you to make it happen. Uh, am I right? Is, is uh, I see Miguel, you're with us. Uh, Tom, is he the, the environmental guy? I, yeah, he, yeah he, he's uh, based in Costa Rica, yes. And Miguel, I, I, I don't mean to speak around you, but uh, I'm just gonna run the search word environment here in our search bar. <laughs> uh just to show you what pops here uh, am i still screen sharing i forget yeah yes you are and uh so there's a a youth award education partnership i'm sure he knows about some of these organizations uh there's a moot environmental moot court competition i mean i mean you know what young person knows about that <laughs> and and again that kind of gets to the beauty of some of these things we're spotlighting because Right, you see it, the overlaps with, with disciplines and subject areas, law, um, human rights, uh, and not just in environments. Uh, well, environment is, is all about those things. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to, to share some of this. And Kathy, what is your title there? Oh, you're muted, sorry. Can you unmute? Oh, well, um, yeah, the, I'm the assistant director for overseas studies and exchanges. And um, so I work with the semester long students that go abroad through our Nazareth sponsored programs. Uh, also, uh, we may identify certain third party providers. Um, we do, we like to encourage students to stay with our own programs because they can use their entire financial aid package. But I also work with faculty and staff to develop um, short term programs, either during the winter break, the spring break or during the summertime also. Great. And, um, you know, well, I, I can't budgets. claim your expertise, but I do understand your world and appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> and I, I like to think about Carpe Global as something that can totally uh, add value to a study abroad experience. I mean, I 
I see it serving hugely along those lines. And, and I think of the returnees, um, even including the, the, the high school uh, kids that I took to Jordan, that was a high school program on behalf of the State Department. And they got back before even getting involved in college and didn't know where to turn. Academically, they had international interests now, totally sparked by Jordan. They didn't know where to turn academically. We address a lot of that just through by the nature of what you learn here. Uh, and they certainly didn't know what to think or where to turn in, in terms of career options, what to, how to, how to craft their academic experience toward that, developing that path. I think we can help big time along those lines. And especially if we, if, if people like, like Kathy tell students that they should utilize us and think about us along those lines, you know, um, and, and by the way, for institutional memberships, our Voyager level subscription, you'll note uh, when you peruse the site more, you'll note that one of the benefits, uh, one of the things we offer as part of that are webinars um, for subscribers uh, and uh, a consultation, which you may, may or may not want or need uh, with, with someone like you on, on how to use this productively, et cetera. But the webinars, we can, sort of customized to campus. We can address study abroad, uh, the returnee, you know, yearning for more and onward. We can address certain resources, opportunities, uh, how, to, how to think about them. Things like, um, I, I had it up in a tab here, things like, I, I mentioned the young professionals, but DevEx here is another great example. Um, it's the granddaddy organization for all things development assistance. And as you know, that's a huge umbrella. A development assistance like foreign policy uh, it is all about multiple disciplines and, and themes. And if I mean, you can have an interest in biology or international law and development assistance can be a career road for you. But no one on campuses is telling students even those who voice an interest in such topics about DevEx. I don't know. <laughs> Drive and, me and, the, and the other thing too is we don't have the, um, you know, our faculty and staff, mainly faculty, don't have the expertise in their area of study on an international level. Right. Um, they basically have been, they themselves for the most part have been ventured out of, you know, the United States. They may have gone to Canada, uh, but uh, that's about it to see yeah. that. And you know, the Canadian Falls. I get know, it. <laughs> I, I recall in, 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 Tom, do we have a few more minutes here? Uh, and Kathy, thanks for hanging in. Um, I recall doing guest lectures over the years, uh, say for, for a professor of education, it was a graduate level uh, education, uh, you know, education majors, uh, and guest lecturing in an international business classroom. And I could do such things because I am just the bizarre eclectic guy. I, I, I don't have any problem wrapping my brain around such things, in part because I knew about the types of things that you're, who were talking about. And I would bring those to bear in these guest lectures, and I would leave at the end of it, having observed in that faculty member's eyes a combination of surprise. It wasn't expected of me, but I, I nailed it, you know, and, and surprise, and uh, I don't know what the other emotion might have been. I won't even venture, but it was a, a bit of a negative. <laughs> And, and part of it sort of got to things that they really should have been sharing long ago with those students. And those students were highly grateful. They, were, they learned from me in that one classroom hour about scholarships, fellowships, things that the professor wasn't bringing to bear. And that, that doesn't make me the international business expert. It makes me the information pack rat. And that's what Carpe Global does. You know, that's how it, it change makes in a big way. So I'm thankful that, that you, Kathy, get it. Now help me help others get it because it's not always easy. <laughs> no, Hi, Jessica. Not easy at all. <laughs> Jessica, do you have any, any questions? Anything I can help with? Oh, I'm here to listen and 
learn at this point. Thank you for asking though. Well, you know where to find the, the website, yes, carpeglobal.com. And uh, I, I'm happy to, to hear from you, uh, do a, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, later on if, if you have questions about it. But uh, I, uh, I should hire Kathy as my spokesperson because she seems to absolutely get and appreciate this. And I take that what, as a great compliment. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Seriously, I, as an international educator, as someone <laughs> whose career has largely been on campuses, I fully understand that one of the primary challenges facing me with this little endeavor of mine will be convincing and persuading the stakeholders. Uh, I, I don't want to get on too much of a soapbox, but we've all been there with people who sometimes don't understand and don't, don't get vision, don't, don't have the sort of creative juices to know how they can utilize something like this in a really different sort of envelope pushing way. And, you know, I, you asked about marketing and, and advertising, which we haven't done much of yet. I, I intend to, to preach to the choir first. I'm not all about converting yet. That'll come later when I have you know, more revenue, more time and energy perhaps, but there's a choir out there and I'll, I'll preach to them in the way I know how and hopefully the rationale and, and what we offer will, will help bring them I, over, but it's not I, always going to be easy. I have a question for both you, Kathy and Jay. Uh, our experience is we've, we have started offering online programs and remote internships. Uh, but we're not getting any interest at all from students. And I'm just wondering if do you think that students may be suffering from online fatigue with all the online classes that they've had. Um, but what I like about Jay, what, what you're doing with Carpet Global, I think it's a unique way of injecting some more innovation creativity into the online classes. But Kathy at, at Nazareth, have, have you seen anything like that? Have students just not really, have they hesitated and not really jumped into taking online classes? Yeah, uh, we have a separate person who directs the uh, international oh, okay. internships, but I can tell you exactly what happened. They had no takers. Even when um, we have a program called the Spark Grant at Nazareth, where the students are uh, provided $1,500 grant, as long as it's a Nazareth sponsored, Nazareth approved, or at least Nazareth approved, especially for the internships a program. So they're, they're given $1,500 as long as the program is approved. And they received um, no, no takers at all. Not absolutely none at all. Um, I wasn't part of the marketing for that, but I, my gut tells me that um, it was probably due to marketing. It may have been due to the shock from the students who, you know, the way the spring semester went down. Um, it, um, yeah, I'm not really exactly sure, but my response to any student who would kind of be um, into the, I don't do whining very well. So <laughs> if they started to whine, I'd say, well, listen, you know what? get over yourself. It's an opportunity. I know, I'm sorry that we can't send you. I'm sorry you can't be in country. I'm sorry that you had to come home, um, but at least you were alive to come home <laughs> and alive to get, you know, but you have to take advantage of it. They're really, sure. you know, you really, I, I think that they could have been a little bit more um, push the students, but again, I know they talk about the fatigue and everything. I, I, I don't go for that, really. Well, I think you it, was, the it was a bit shock. of whining. Yeah. I think there has been a shock element uh, that people are, are still in. I don't think some, some are past that. I'm not sure I am. <laughs> this has been a bizarre year. <laughs> Just, oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, to Tom, I'm wondering if, uh, and, and Jessica may have an answer for you, I'm wondering if part of your, your challenge isn't similar to what I think I will face in that I need to, I either need to find the visionary stakeholders, as in Kathy, <laughs> given what I've heard her say, or work my way under, around, uh, you know, or 
uh, or, or into the, the, the good graces of the stakeholders such that they, they do get this. And, and then, here's my point, pass it on to students, then make it known. I, I wonder if that's not happening for you enough. I wonder if it's not making its way to the people who need to see it because the stakeholders uh, are busy, you know, pa pandemic issues uh, or perhaps don't get it fully. I, I don't know. Well, it, it, that's, you, you make some good points. I think with, um, with us, with Abroadia, it, it, it's hard to compete with CIEE, API, you know, um, Arcadia. These are, these are huge programs, and that's not what we're about. We're just a right. small 300. If we send 300 students abroad, maybe 500 a year. That's great for us. I'd be more than happy with that. But I like the fact that, you know, what I've been trying to, I've been traveling all over, well, I was traveling all over the place until this spring. Uh, I was saying, you know, we, f our, we focus on Latin America and, and, and Cuba. That's it. We're not going to be a, 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 a Walmart program that offers programs in 50, parts, uh, 50 countries around the world. We can't. That's not sustainable for us. And for me, it, keeps, it, it would uh, distract me. I need to focus only on Cuba and Latin America, and that's it. It's, I th like you say, Jay, it's going to take time. You, I still believe in the, the power of, uh, um, you know, yeah, the uh, pr promotion by word of mouth, that type of thing. You know, we, we, we don't go by, we don't do print literature. It's all digital. It, it just takes time. I think you right now, uh, Jay, are in a very good position to really take advantage of that, I think, because your your presence is entirely online and, and you're networking. I always consider myself a good facilitator or networker, but you're taking it up to a whole different level. Like I said, with the Professors Without Borders, I had never heard of them before. And I think you could really Get, gain some interest with that. Maybe establish connections between them and colleges and universities in the states. But it it takes time. You're right. You have to reach the 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 stakeholders. But it it's just going to take time. And right now, the big distraction is the pandemic. Uh, yeah. And and I I don't want to interrupt you. But Kathy at Nazareth, I can't remember if you said this. Are, are you all online this fall or not? Uh, no, it's um, we the students started classes on campus on Monday, so okay. this is their third day, and uh, some and the way it worked out was I believe that if I if the numbers if I remember the numbers correctly, twenty five percent of courses are all in person, twenty five percent are all online, oh, and fifty percent are hybrid. Okay, okay. Well, you know, we have Holbrook and William Smith here, and they just, uh, tomorrow's their orientation, and they begin on Monday. And they've already started partying. <laughs> so we're crossing our fingers. We'll have to see what happens. It's just, uh, it, is, it is what it is. But um, well, what to see. And going back to what Jay offers in Carpet Global, I think that's a, he's uniquely situated to really uh, help navigate colleges and universities uh, through this period. You know, it's going to be all online. We have to be creative in doing that online. And I think the resources, the connections you're making there are going to be fantastic. Well, Tom, I'll, I'll sleep easier if only tonight, knowing there are visionaries like you and Kathy and, <laughs> and probably Jessica <laughs> uh, who, who get this. Uh, but then tomorrow night, I won't sleep well because I fully understand the challenges of convincing and persuading. I mean, for goodness sake, me, me as sort of a special programs guy over the years, uh, envelope pushing it's oh i know i know trying to do the, the things i just enjoy doing and can do not that i do everything well but it's, it was so hard because you're you're so often having to smash through the old status quo you know everybody likes comfort uh the comptroller's office on campus they don't want to be told that we have to use a different payment system in jordan because what we're doing now doesn't work no, and, well, and won't get my program <laughs> you know, paid for in country. And, and so it's just all these, these challenges. And I, I think we're gonna face that with Carpe Global, the status quo. Yeah. And rather than someone like, like Kathy, who seems to be understanding it's, it's instantly value added and maybe makes the job easier, some people will view it as, oh, he's trying to sell me something that's just gonna pile on more work. And that's just absolutely not the case, no, that's, you know? That's right. <laughs> but, but how do you, I'll, I'm up to the, the challenge, but I, I'd sure rather not face it. I, I, I wish more of the, the choir was more easily preached to. Is that, 
<laughs> way to put it. <laughs> it yeah, it, it takes time, but I think yeah. it's worth it. It's, it's, a, it's a battle worth fighting. That's all I can say. I, I have fought the, the, the lack of vision battles all my life, and I'm not ready to stop now. So, uh, Good. and I don't mean to sound like uh, it, it, I probably sound a little egocentric saying all this, but I, I just, it's a challenge. And um, I, I'm going to be real excited to whatever extent we can engage campuses uh, with Carpe Global. Um, and Kathy, if, if you're the, the first, um, I'll, I'll pull out the stops and do whatever I can to, to customize, to, uh, to make it worth the while for you. Well, I, th uh, I think that's it. Any, any other questions, Jessica, Kathy? I think, uh... No, I think, I'm, I think I'm good. Quick okay. mention of Cuba, Tom? Cuba? Well, it's right now I'm still waiting to hear from some colleagues about what, what the situation is right now. Right now we can still go, but we just don't know. Tom and, and I have talked about a study tour that I, I would lead uh, next summer in Cuba, but yeah. there are a lot of... They are, but we, we, had, we ran a couple of successful programs last year. I think we can do it again. It's just in the weeks leading up to the election, we don't know what Trump is going to do. That's what I'm concerned about, but, but we, we will see. So that's a stay tuned item. It's a stay tuned, but I'll be in touch. <laughs> Jessica, Kathy, uh, thank you. Uh, happy to have a follow-up conversation if you like. Um, and, and Tom, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, yeah. um, thank, thank you for your time. Let's let you and I have a chat uh, later in the week uh, sure. to follow up on this. Um, and maybe there's a way we can follow up with those.